Pastor Phil, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, getting on with me today. Um, yeah. You're here with Griffin Wellness Solutions, and we wanted to have a conversation with you today about heart health. Oh, wow. Okay. So Wonderful. today we're going to just kind of just run it nice and easy and just let you let this conversation flow. But what we really want to do is to give you an opportunity to talk to as many men and women, particularly African American men and women about heart health and diet and the things that you can do to have a heart, a healthy heart. Wow. So can you just start off Pastor Phil and just tell us a little bit about your journey as a senior pastor and then how it flowed, how you think it flowed into, um, you know, making sure that you pay attention to good heart health. Well, yeah, well, thanks, Tracy. And, and thanks for having me. It's great to be here with you, my Thank friend. You. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, I, uh, it, it's interesting, you know, uh, I never planned on being a pastor, never planned on being a minister of the gospel, it wasn't my intention, although my father was, and I do remember days, uh, you know, on Sundays, you know, thinking, while I'm watching him up there, that maybe someday as a child, I, I'm going to do that. And then as an as an adolescent, there was I was thinking, there's no way I'd ever do that. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I ran from the Lord to the other part of the country when as far away from my parents and family as I could. Got wanted to get away from the church. Ended up on the West Coast and ran smack dab into God there on the West Coast. And so. Um, you know, God had a plan for my life. And so I say I was chased by chosen that literally God was, um, you know, had a, his call on me. So, you know, kind of came home um, after going through a really rough divorce and thought about a future. And, you know, so I told my dad, hey, I want to be here six months. I'm going to live in your basement, get myself together, you know, pick myself up and head off to Washington, D.C. I had a job, a job opportunity. So um, got home, got in the basement of my parents' house and Went to church one Sunday and heard the gospel, and that it, you know, it's uh, it's it's over after that. You know, when I when I accepted the Lord, I uh, just got on a journey. Ended up teaching kids about Black history in the basement of my parents' church, which ultimately turned into a Bible study um, uh, at uh, at the basement of Shiloh Baptist Church. Me and a few kids, and wow. ultimately grew to New Generation Youth Ministry, and then the church asked me come on as a youth minister where I served for 15 years. Uh, you know, in the process of that, of course, I met my wife, we got married. And then um, 2005, my father passed away. Um, and uh, the church prior to that in January of 2005, church asked me to uh, serve as a senior pastor under my father's tutelage. Um, but uh, 30 days prior to him uh, doing my installation, um, the Lord called him home to glory. But I guess his work was done and mine was just beginning in some aspects. Um, so, you know, I have the privilege of carrying on the legacy of my dad, my mom and dad here in um, Greater Shiloh. So I've been serving here as a senior pastor for about 15 years. We're one church, as you know, in multiple locations here, Stroudsburg, Sanford, Florida, um, a new plant in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and of course, um, a mission, which is really there in Haiti, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's the story, bro. That's how I ended up um, serving here um, at, at Shiloh. Well, I have to put my plug in and say that you're doing a mighty fine job as senior yeah. pastor at Greater Shiloh yeah. Church. So I'm uh, grateful. So God, I, be <laughs> God be the glory. I've been there with you throughout that journey and I yeah. know everything that you said. So I know uh, that, you know, all the work that's been done with Greater Shiloh. Um, yeah. So as far as um, uh, that journey, yeah. As a senior pastor, going along that journey, you've had some challenges along the way uh, as far as health challenges, Pastor. Yeah. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about those health challenges and then tell us a little bit about, you know, what the doctors told you about it and what they told you you needed to do about it? Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so took over in um, May of 2005 um, as a senior leader, you know, in my father's stead. Um, as the Lord had called him home to his reward. Um, and within nine months, April of the following year, uh, 2006, um, I had a, a, a heart attack, a pretty major heart attack, um, where I had uh, three blocked arteries, completely blocked arteries. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at the age of 40, the tender young age of 40, it seems so long ago, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, it was after a Sunday morning service and I, I began to feel 
pain in my chest. Yeah. Um, at which point I had a friend with me. I said, hey, I'm feeling really strange. I started sweating, um, mm -hmm. started getting some numbness on my left side, uh, trouble breathing and feeling tired, right? Which are all, if to your audience, which are all very critical signs of, of an impending heart attack. Um, and so profuse sweating, exhaustion, pain in your chest, you know, I would encourage everyone don't, don't, you know, write that off as something simple. Right. Um, if you get those type of signs, you really want to, um, you know, move as swiftly as you can, because the quicker you get to the hospital and get the help, the, the more likely you are that it doesn't have long-term effects. And I'll talk a little bit about that down the road. Um, but I got to the hospital and as uh, soon as I got in there and they, you know, took my blood pressure, it was off the charts. They saw me sweating profusely with, with heart, um, with chest pains. They were like, he's having a heart attack. So they, they ran a test on me that actually checks the level of enzymes in your blood. So one of the ways that they can um, identify whether you've had a heart attack or not um, is they'll run a test. And if these enzymes, if the heart has released these enzymes into your blood, it's a signal that you have suffered uh, a level of heart attack. They, you know, uh, after that test came back uh, within probably 20 minutes, my wife was there that we thought things had settled down. She had to run and grab something to eat. By the time she got back, I was on a gurney and they were taking me into, they were taking me into, uh, into surgery. And so for a 40 year old, you know, guy, um, totally surprising, you know, for something like that to happen. Um, found out that I had three blockages. So they put three stents in my heart um, the first time around. Um, and so that was a uh, very shocking um, to me. I did have some um, indicators going in. Oh, okay. Uh, I had actually put in for some health insurance. Um, and so the people who came out to do my health insurance, you know, they take your blood and, you know, you give them samples and uh, so I put in for like maybe 500,000 in health insurance and they came back and were like, we can't give you 500,000, you know, at the rate we were talking about. And I said, well, I'm not. They said, well, your cholesterol is 346 and your bad cholesterol is extremely high. Now that should, that should have sent some signals off, right? Because we know, right, good cholesterol levels are 200 and below with your HDL being higher significantly. Am I got that right? The HDL and the LDL. Um, and so, um, you know, I wasn't paying attention. I, I'm thinking I'm 40, I'm young. Ah, what's, what's cholesterol? So that's a key indicator as well for all of your uh, viewers and those that will view this, being able to know what your cholesterol levels are because cholesterol, high cholesterol can create blockages in the valves within your heart and then, of course, the heart can't flow. So that was an indicator, Tracy. And at 40, I wasn't thinking about it. I never thought about, you know, right. what the ramifications of that could be. So I hope I'm not talking too long. You can stop me. No, I, you know, I, this is good. This is good. Yeah. I, I was, as, you, as you're talking, I'm thinking, okay, well, I know you used to play football. I know, yeah. I know right now you work out. And then I didn't know how much you worked out then. But tell me a little bit about your your at your, your physical activity around that time during that first heart attack. Tell me also a little bit about how many times, how regularly did you go for an annual physical to the doctor? Oh, very good, excellent point, excellent questions. Um, yeah, so um, I was very active. Um, I was running, uh, you know, I was, I was um, you know, involved to play a little basketball here and there, but I was definitely an active person. So at that time being 40, I still, you know, thought I could play a little hoop, could play a little basketball. But the point being, I was not a sedentary person. I was always coming and going, always moving, always active, working out. I mean, back then we were doing Tai Bo. Uh, if you remember uh, Billy Blanks and Tai Bo. So, yeah. you know, that's the kind of stuff that I, that's the kind of stuff that I was <laughs> I am. I am, man. We had a member of the church who was living with us at the time, and me and him would be in the living room just kind of going at it with, with, with Billy Blanks. So, you know, from, a, from an activity level, um, mm -hmm. I was uh, – I was very active, which is very surprising okay. for a guy like me to, you know, and, and, and I don't mean that with any arrogance, but for someone, I wasn't overweight, um, you know, mm -hmm. on that chart, I would be considered, you know, almost obese, but for a normal African-American 40 year old male, I was in pretty good shape. I was active. I was working out. I did not have the best diet. So, you know, then you start thinking about what could I have done differently? 
um, fried foods, bacon, you know, uh, pork, uh, you know, those foods that are just not conducive to a heart healthy living. I wasn't taking any vitamins or supplements, you know, um, and you asked me about the doctor. I, you know, at 40, I wasn't even thinking about the doctor. I mean, you know, I went in, if I needed a physical for something, but I wasn't going for my regular annual checkups. Uh, I don't even think I had a family doctor at that point. Right. That's, that's, that's good. That's very insightful, especially uh, for those listeners that are in their forties or even, even before you turn 40, you know, how often do you think someone should go for an annual physical. I know the doctors tell us that, you know, once you read a, reach a certain age, you should go annually, but sometimes it's every other year. I don't even remember back. I'm 59 now. So, I mean, 57 now, so I don't remember, but I know I have to go every year now, you know, and I know that as far as cholesterol is concerned, you know, that's something I really have to pay attention to. Um, yeah. And I'm on medication for uh, cholesterol levels, but. Um, and you're an active guy too, Tracy. So it's not like, you know, it's it's not like you know it's it's an anomaly for for men our age to, to struggle with cholesterol. But I I I had a chance to talk to a nurse, and she told me that our cholesterol m- multiple nurses over my tenure, uh, but th- th- they all affirmed to me and and a nutritionist that that you we get most of our um, cholesterol from meat, right? So mm-hmm. you know from from meaty foods because that's where cholesterol is produced from. So yeah. well, Steve and I became vegan, um, and yeah. I had the best cholesterol readings that I ever had. I just didn't stay a vegan for long. That was the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would like to talk about that at some point, you know, kind of touch on because I remember coming over to your house, watching a football game and I had this vegan meal and that was, I still remember that to this day. It was so, My wife must've made it. I didn't do it. Yeah. She threw down on that. That was delicious, you know, but um, you know, we really, you, you touched on something about diet. You know, yeah. I've been learning something about diet a little more and more about what I should take intake and different times of the day, uh, the things that you should intake. But um, how do you con- how do you manage your diet now, especially how many how many uh, heart attacks? Did you mention how many heart attacks you had had four, four heart attacks? So tell us with a man like you, what are the doctors telling you about your diet, what you should do? So I, I have a, um, a, a condition they talked about uh, for me, and I, I can't recall the name of it now when my body produces a lot of cholesterol. So mm-hmm. I have to be extremely mindful of my intake um, mm-hmm. of meats um, and what types of meats I eat. So I, I don't eat pork, uh, no, f- in any form, whether it be bacon or whether it is uh, pork chops or, you know, mm-hmm. I eat zero fried food. So mm-hmm. uh, the classic and traditional food of, you know, fried pork chops and fried chicken. Um, I, I don't, I don't eat any of that. I very rarely, if I have a steak, it's probably once every two or three months. Um, and so, you know, the, the scripture reminds us that we should do all things in moderation. Um, and so for me, you know, no, I don't drink sodas because they're just, you know, sugar water, um, essentially, but being mindful of bread intake, white bread, even wheat bread is not great for you. Um, you know, as I've learned over the years, uh, and so really high on fruits and vegetables, so the problem is not doing it. The problem is sustaining it, right? Because I think, and I'll share with, with you, because people say to me all the time, man, you have four heart attacks. I couldn't tell you had one heart attack. I said, no, trust me, I've had four. Um, you know, and, and I think for me, a um, couple of things. Number one, um, I, I've gotten bad advice from doctors and PAs. So wow. let me encourage your, your listeners to make sure that you're, if you're going to the doctor, that number one, you're making sure that you have a good doctor. Number two, that you're listening to what they're saying. So yeah. my second heart attack occurred because I, I came off my medication. I thought, you know, I'm doing fine. My cholesterol numbers are down. I'm exercising, I'm eating right. Um, and what happened was I came off of my medications, one of my medications, my cholesterol medication, Um, and so I had my first one in 2010. My second one was like in 2014, 15. Um, so, you know, four or five years later, I had another heart attack and this time, um, it was what they call the widow maker. Uh, Um, and that is when your lower descending artery fully a hundred percent blocked, they say you're supposed to die within 15 minutes of that. 
Um, and by the grace of God, I was able to live. So I had a full blockage. Now they said they weren't sure if, because what happens when your arteries get blocked, right? And as your artery plaque gets around the outside of your arteries because of your high cholesterol, right? Which then, you know, makes the, the hole that your blood can go through smaller. And so what happened, they said, what the doctor thought was that a piece of plaque broke off from one part of my, um, one part of my uh, vein or, or vessel, blood vessel, and then found its way to where there was a smaller part and it just blocked the whole thing. It just happened to be in my lower descending wow. artery. Could have killed me in 15 minutes. I mean, you know, and, and literally it was an hour drive from where I was in New Jersey to, to where I ended up at that hospital in, uh, up, up, in, uh, up in upper New Jersey. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you were there that Sunday when that happened. That happened on a Sunday too. Yeah. Yes. All I know is that um, all I know is Pastor Christina laid hands on you that day mm. to get you going. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She did, and she rebuked a couple of devils at me. Yeah, I remember that. And I think that was the time I was headed up to the Poconos, and I got a call. Okay. I believe that was that time, but yeah, yeah, there there have been multiple times. Sad, sadly enough to say, all three of them have happened on a Sunday. Only one has happened on a, on an off on an off day. But I was in the, I was in the church office when that when the third one happened. Yeah. But we really have to be careful with the fried foods. Oh. In fact, we shouldn't probably. Once we fry the food, we really kill the food all in. Yeah. Food, right. Yeah. Well, you know probably more about that than I do. But I know that my doctor said your body's not even made to digest that kind of stuff. And what it does to your arteries um, is, is, is just you're, you're just damaging your internal, you know, your heart every time you eat a piece of fried chicken or, you know, pork chops. And, and not only that, but there's a lot of seafood that's bad for folks, too. So any bottom feeder, crustacean, crabs, lobsters, scallops, and my family loves this stuff. And my wife has really low cholesterol, so she can eat what she wants. Do it, yeah. She's fine. She don't hurt me with it. But right, all of those things are 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 cholesterol producing issues as well. You know, heart disease is number one killer uh, among men now. So, yeah. you know, we have to be mindful of of you know how it impacts us because it impacts a large um, you know diverse population of people. So years back, we had a five k run. Yeah, you remember that, right? What did you did? What inspired you to? Uh, to have Shiloh sponsor a 5K, uh, you know, at that time? You know, I, I uh, for me, it was about heart health and mm -hmm. it was about getting people moving because what we don't understand is there's many things that we can do to minimize our potentiality of having heart disease, uh, you know, or high blood pressure, hypertension, that kind of stuff. And one of the greatest things that we can do is exercise. Um, it's not the end all to be all um, but exercise definitely causes you to have a, a healthier heart so the 5k was all about hey listen let's get out here let's get moving it's a walk run so some people ran and some people walked I kind of did a walk run myself to participate yeah. but it was about uh, community health because heart disease in the African-American community is higher than it is in any other community in the United States so we're number one right among nice. Well, I think it's because of a number of issues. Well, let, let me say that um, how we deal with stress is critically important to uh, our internal health, specifically our heart health and our emotional health. So how we deal with stress and the stressors that I think African-Americans are under um, is significant because it's not just the normal stress of the world. We have the stress of oppression and racism, which is historic and has been here since the inception, 1619, when you know, we, we hit the first rock, <laughs> you know, Plymouth Rock, if you will, coming in, coming into, or Jamestown, coming into these United States. And so now we have that that we're dealing with. And then you have to go to dealing with that, that those microaggressions that happen in the community and where you live, where you work. Um, and, and so that stress. And then I think the second part of that, you know, of course, is our diets, right? We're, we're, we're many a times, you know, okay, so I'm not, Okay, I'm opposed to chitlins. I think they're the worst food in the world. My wife loves them, though. <laughs> but, you know, eating off the pig, man, you know, is not, it's not good for us, even though I know it has a traditional value and, you know, it's historical, it's heritage, but I'm like, don't eat the guts of a pig. What are you doing? That's you know? 
to them. Very bad smell to them. I remember that. <laughs> right. Well, I told Christina one time, I'm like, you can't cook them at my house. I said, you, if you're going to eat them, we weren't even married yet, I think. And they bought 50 pounds of, of chitlins, clean it in the bathtub. And then and then I'm like, what is that smell? I've never smelled it like that before. And they were like chitlins. I said, you bought 50 pounds of chitlins and you got this little uh, pot. I said, do you know what that other stuff was that you took out of those chitlins? I I'm sorry. I know I don't want to be gross for your folks. That's, that's what we've been accustomed to eating. And that's like a um, delicacy in some yeah, cases. It is. Yeah, it is. That, yeah. that we eat that. And, um, you know, I've seen, I've, I've noticed an evolution uh, of dieting for some of us, or at least the people that I'm around the most. But there's yeah. still an awful lot of people, Americans in general, that yeah. need to really pay attention to their diet because what they're consuming is affecting the arteries, affecting the heart, you know, and we touched on so many things. We touched on, you know, exercise, we yeah. touched on diet, you know, we talked on regular, touched on uh, physicals, having regular physicals, um, just so that the doctors can kind of be abreast of what's going on in our bodies, especially as we age, you know, so a lot of good stuff, but you once talked about the five S's. Oh, you're going to remind me what they were? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going to remind you. So it's faith, uh -huh. family, finance, fitness, and future. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, I thought you said S's, so I, I apologize. Yeah, I know what the F's are. Uh -huh. the, 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 F, the five F's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are, uh, yeah. It's all no, good. But you know what these are. Yeah, absolutely. And they all come together. Family, finance, fitness, future. You know, how does all of that, how's all of that come together? But the fitness part, how important yeah. is that in all in that equation? You know, I can't I can't say, say it enough. So I'm, I, I've been doing some consulting with some folks that have been just kind of de dealing with a lot of trauma. Mm. Uh, and so in my in my work that I've been doing with them, uh, we've been talking about how do I, how, you know, one of the questions was, how do I deal with all this going on in my life? How do I deal with all of the, you know, the multiple memories? And I said, you know, one of any any therapist worth their salt will tell you that one of the best ways to deal with depression, one of the best ways to deal with trauma, one of the de best ways to deal with, you know, uh, emotional overload yeah. is exercise, mm -hmm. right? Because exercise is a natural way to allow the brain and the mind to release the necessary hormones and care, epinephrine and adrenaline and all this other stuff. Um, when you are working out, it literally releases um, chemicals that are the feel good chemicals of life. Um, and, you know, I've always said this, it's never what I do when I get to the gym, it's getting to the gym. Cause once I get there and I start, I get the good feeling, right? I get, I get the releasing, you know, of the endorphins and you know, my, you know, it, what, it's just a natural way. And so fitness, I, I can't say enough about fitness because fitness is critically important. You know, I believe this personally, I believe if I, if I wasn't active, Tracy, um, you know, and I wasn't, you know, uh, consistent with my working out, I, I believe that um, those heart attacks could have really taken me out. Um, yeah. And, and I, I say that, of course, you know, the first thing is always faith, right? God's plan for my life. But I have a responsibility too. We get one temple, yeah. right? According to the scriptures, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we got to take care of our bodies. And, and so, you know, I've had four heart attacks, but, and you know, I've had no damage to my heart muscle trace. So that, that muscle that goes around the heart that causes it to pump and do what it does. Many times what happens when people have heart attacks, there's damage to the outer lining of that heart. Mm -hmm. So then that muscle decreases and then it can't pump like it's supposed to. And over time you have a diminished lifestyle. Well, I've got, I've got zero damage to my heart muscle and I've been through four heart attacks. I've got seven stents in my heart and stents are, if you ever have a heart attack, they put them in there to open up your valves. Yeah. Um, my wife jokes with me and says, calls me to buy, uh, you know, the, the idea is that, um, if I don't, I believe if I wasn't active, I would have had the outcome could have been really different for me. And even maybe some of the activity you had as a, as a child, when you're in high school and you play football and all that, you think that, yeah, you know, I, I, I did, I did every sport. My mom said, I didn't, I didn't learn anything else, but I definitely learned how to play sports. She used to joke with me. <laughs> That's a good lesson for our for our parents, right? And a good lesson for our kids. Because today, especially in this day and age, we're in, in, in this COVID environment where our kids are less active. 
they're in front okay. of computers and the cell phones and things that yeah. Nature. yeah. yeah. It's important that you, you that our parent that the parents keep the kids active, involved in some sort of physical activity. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But when you say you go to the gym, um, is it like do a few push-ups here and there or I mean, what what are you doing to, to for heart health when you hit the gym? I can go to the gym and you know just go pose and do all that. <laughs> you could because you got the physique. I can. I get in there. I need to work out, Chase. But when you talk about your heart, yeah. When you heart, when you go to your heart, what do you go for when you're thinking about when you go to the gym? Right. So for me, you know, it's really about cardio. I'm I'm cardio, mm -hmm. cardio, cardio. Um, but I learned that cardio mixed with weightlifting is better. Than just straight cardio right for me i'm still trying to you know uh, uh tune fine tune my body so i i definitely will go hard on the cardio but every other day or once a week i'll make sure that i get some weightlifting in mm -hmm. uh, because both of them are you know help help balance and i I, yeah. I did something for myself which i gave myself and my wife a gift i got the peloton bike uh ah. yeah I actually, I actually did. I got a big gift certificate. Somebody blessed me. And I was like, I'm just going to bite the bullet and do it. And man, I'm riding that Peloton bike, man, like five days a week now. So and it's right. Cool, in my isn't it? They're coaching yeah. you on that. Yeah. And there's, there's a TV screen and there's people right on the screen and they're yeah. talking to you, encouraging you, got the music going on in the headphones. Um, so it is, it is my, it is my intention to get up to a thousand rides. That's my goal. I'm at 20 now. So <laughs> I've got a ways to go. I just got the bike. So that's my new, that's my new cardio. Um, and then, you know, I'll continue to do the weightlifting, but for me, the cardio, it, it strengthens your heart, right? Because the more, the more stress in a good way that you put on your heart, um, the stronger it will get. And, and, you know, um, you, you'll be able to avoid, you know, heart issues and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Awesome. You touched a little bit about supplements. It's yeah. good to exercise. It's good to have a healthy diet. Um, it's good to go to the doctor for physicals, but what do you recommend as far as supplements or what are the doctors telling you about supplements? Yeah. So for, for heart health, one of the, one, of, well, the, um, CoQ10, um, it is q -nol. I take q -nol, CoQ10, um, vitamin E and vitamin D, um, are the two kind of main supplements that I take. And then I take a vitamin B as well, um, and B12. Um, so, you know, those are the, kind of the building, the essential building blocks um, yeah. of, uh, of what uh, my doctors, and I have a nutritionist who, who I used to work with, who told me that all of those are critical to heart health. So um, the, the B, the C, the, the B, the D, the B12, um, and the Q, and the, uh, QNOL, um, which, which I take all of those for, you know, for the daily? old heart. Yeah. You do that daily? You do it daily? Yeah, daily. And vitamin E, I'm sorry. Vitamin E. Literally fish oil, right in a in a little shell, uh, but it's supposed to be good for you. So they tell me it's good for me. I take it, you know. Hope hey, it's working. You, I see you. I see you see any more heart attack? But <laughs> thanks, bro. I you appreciate really it. Good. Yeah. Really good. And, uh, You're my inspiration, man. You were doing uh, P90X at a whole nother level. You know, you inspired yeah. me to keep going. Well, now I want to hear how you're making out on that bike because I want to get one of them. I just uh, wasn't ready to fit that I'm, one in the budget just yet. But you're cheap, man. Uh, that's what my wife said. You're cheap. So, you know, some folks got together and blessed me. Great so to see it in my life, I was like, I'm doing it. She's riding too. I'm riding. We're having a blast. Um, but, uh, you know, but again, it's about consistency. Um, if I can say one thing, Trace, and I know we're getting close to our time, um, the management of stress is critically important. Mm -hmm. uh, stress is a silent killer uh, and a lot of times we don't understand that but our hypertension our internal stomach issues right many times headaches uh, you know these manifestations a lot of it comes from a lack of inner peace and being able to manage all of the things that are going on in our life appropriately um, and so I always want to encourage individuals when I have an opportunity um, to you know just just remember what the scripture says about not worrying about anything but praying about everything according to philippians chapter four because there is um, a reality that stress impacts multiple millions um, of people and ultimately ends up impacting folks you know in their in their psychology you know essentially in their mental 
uh, reality as well as in their physical bodies. So being able to manage that stress is critically important to helping bring balance and uh, you know uh, helping towards our heart health. Yeah, that's that's good. And you know, you you like going. We're right on track with this conversation because I was one of the questions I wanted to ask you was uh, the question about spirituality and heart health. You know, what do you have to say to people about spirituality and heart health? Wow, that's that's great. So um, one of the things that that is so important, I actually, uh, as you know, I'm a student as well. I'm in school, and I actually did some research. Doctor. Uh, and <laughs> soon to be, no. I finish. We keep speaking that, yes. um, but but um, there, there's empirical data, right? Empirical research out there that says that people of faith, when they get sick, have a greater percentage and capacity to get well because having faith connects you to a higher power, right? Which you can then, which then gives you hope. Right, and the doctors did the research, and the researchers did what they do, um, and it is just a simple reality. People who have faith have who have a faith in something, right? And and I, you know, because I'm a Christian, you know, my persuasion, of course, is Christ Jesus, right, and and His saving grace. But people who operate in faith get get better longer and have a better quality of life. It is absolutely empirically documented. So when you think about having a good journey, I believe it's in, um, in, in the gospel of John, um, the, he's writing and he says, you know, I would above all things um, that you be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. And I believe the implication of that text is that if you're going to have a good life journey, you're going to need to have a good soul journey, right? That that your spirituality, your connectivity um, to your God um, is going to then have an impact in how you live out your life and how you manifest your life every day. And so I think it's critically important to have spiritual, you know, here's the thing. I, I, I remember um, even laying on the gurney, I, I joke about this all the time. Um, I, I was laying on the gurney and they were getting ready to wheel me down to the to the to the operating room and i said man it, it this there's all of these white lights and all of these white robes and all of these white people <laughs> you know i said i'm I, am i going am i going to heaven here what's happening you know what i mean uh, am i already dead um but you know the reality is we we have to take care of ourselves right and we have to uh, make sure that we understand that you know we are created for a purpose and i remember laying on that on that bed and before they asked me to count to 10 and even prior to that i was talking to the lord i'm like you know god please help me through this you know and then on the other side of it there's a thing that comes you know when they you know post cardio work you know and you start having questions like god why this happened right so forth and so on but it was my faith that has caused me to get through each challenge that i've had with my heart and you know, here I am at 50, turning 55 this month, um, you know, and and healthier, I think, now than I've ever been, at least in the last 25 years, um, and feeling good about life and, you know, have a great outlook on my future. So, yeah. yeah, and you look well. Wow, wow. I think uh, there's a wealth of information that was shared here today, Pastor Phil. Yeah. Um, and, you know, hopefully uh, this opens up the door for Griffin Wellness Solutions to bring a message of wellness and health to uh, to to our to the community. You know, so, we need it so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for this opportunity. If you had to say one thing about where you wanted to see uh, uh, health and nutrition go in our society, what would you say? Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, one of the I think the critical things is. Um, and I'll, I'm going to be a little focused here um, in the African American community. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have to do a better job of taking care of ourselves. Um, you know, black men live, you know, uh, have shorter lifespans than any other group of men, I think, other than native um, Indians. And they've been through more stress than we have. I mean, you know, when you consider this was their land at one point. But I, I think that when we don't live healthily, um, it impacts not only us, but it impacts our family. It impacts our future generations. Yes. So if we could, um, you know, raise our awareness of, you know, issues like diabetes, high blood pressure, 
um, you know, prostate cancer and all of these other things, we could then not only have a healthier journey, but then we could impact our families and we could create generational opportunities for health and the heritage that we pass down is not one of sickness, but yeah. it's one of wellness. And I think that's one of the critical, important things that we need to really be focused on. Very good. What a way to end the conversation, Pastor Phil. Thank you, bro. Yes, thank you so much. So I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. Um, myself, Tracy Griffin, and our senior pastor, Philip Davis, soon to be Dr. Philip Davis. Um, praise God. We just thank you and thank you for joining us and stay tuned for more health solutions. God bless everybody. Thank you, Tracy, for having me. All right. Thank you.